Introduction to Linear Inequalities Firstly, we're going to look at what is an inequality. So an inequality is a relationship between two quantities that are not equal. When dealing with inequalities, we use the following symbols to represent the relationship between two quantities. Greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. Often when we are dealing with inequalities, we will be asked to represent the solutions to an inequality on a number line. Writing numbers down on a number line makes it easy to tell which numbers are bigger or smaller. On a number line, we always put the negative numbers on the left-hand side and the positive numbers on the right-hand side. Numbers on the left are smaller than numbers on the right. Let's look at some examples of simple inequalities. We'll start by looking at greater than. So if we take the numbers 3 and 8, we know that 8 is greater than 3. We can write this as 8 is greater than 3. Notice how 3 is further left on the number line than 8. Another example is if we take the numbers minus 1 and plus 1. Again, 1 is of course greater than minus 1, so we can write this as 1 is greater than minus 1. See again how the smaller number is further left on the number line. Now we look at some examples of less than. A simple example is if we take the numbers 10 and 2. So we know that 2 is less than 10. And we can write this as 2 is less than 10. Next, let's take the numbers minus 4 and minus 9. If we think about these numbers in terms of temperatures, minus 9 degrees is colder or a lower temperature than a minus 4 degrees. So minus 9 is less than minus 4. We can write this as minus 9 is less than minus 4. Now that we have looked at some basic inequalities, let's look at what linear inequalities are. So in equations, one side is equal to the other. In linear inequalities, one side is bigger than, or smaller than, or equal to the other side. A linear equation has only one solution. An inequality has a set of possible solutions. All the possible solutions of an inequality is called the solution set. Now we'll try some examples of linear inequalities. So in part A here, we're asked, given that x is an integer, State the possible integer values of x in the equality x is greater than 4. So remember, integers are all the positive and negative whole numbers. So what x is greater than 4 means is that if we put any integer greater than 4 into our inequality, it will be true. So we could replace the x with the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on as far as infinity. In part b, we're asked, given that x is a real number, state the possible values of x in the inequality x is less than or equal to minus 3. So remember, our real numbers include all the numbers. So in this inequality, x is less than or equal to minus 3. If we put minus 3 or any number less than minus 3, so it could be minus 3.1, minus 3.111, or minus 4. So if we put any of these numbers into our inequality in place of x, it will remain true. Often in inequalities like this one, there are many possible solutions. So because of this, we often represent our solutions using number lines. So let's look at how we can do this. There are certain things you need to remember when we're using number lines to represent inequalities. Firstly, we use dots to represent integers or natural numbers on the number line because there are no numbers in between which we need to include. However, we use a continuous line to represent real numbers on the number line, and the reason for this is because there are an infinite amount of real numbers between any two numbers on our number line, so we need to include these, so we use a continuous line. So if we look at our first inequality, it was x is greater than 4, where x is an element of the integers. Now we use dots to show which integers are possible solutions. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are all possible solutions. But all the integers greater than 10 are also possible solutions. So to show this, we put an arrow at the end of the number line, like so. Our 
Our next inequality was x is less than or equal to minus 3, where x is an element of the real numbers. So minus 3 is the first real number that is a possible solution, because minus 3 is, of course, equal to minus 3. So to show that we are including minus 3, we use a filled-in circle around minus 3. If this inequality was x is less than minus 3, we would use an open circle around minus 3 to show that it wasn't a possible solution. But in this case, it is a possible solution, so we use a closed circle around it. Now all the real numbers less than minus 3 are also possible solutions. So remember, we use a continuous line to represent real numbers on the number line. So we use a continuous line along our number line. Now in this case again, we also want to include all the numbers less than minus 10. So we're going to use an arrow at the end of our number line to show that all the negative real numbers less than minus 10 are also solutions. So we need to remember, when dealing with real number solutions, an open circle is used for less than and greater than to indicate that the number is not included. A filled in circle is used for less than or equal to and greater than or equal to to indicate that the number is included. And a line with an arrow indicates that the line continues to infinity in the direction of the arrow.